good morning, um, Barbara and Keisha. Um, we're going to talk about today Prison Valley. It was an interactive web documentary that was created about three years ago. It launched in April 2010. Uh, it took about 16 months to create the whole thing. Um, they went in with the idea of making a documentary, but the whole interactive thing gradually happened as they began um, their research and exploring the entire valley of Colorado. Um, so I think by now we all realize that there's no one true definition to transmedia. Um, we've got all these different ideas in our heads that kind of gradually expands as we go through the course and, and time goes by. But uh, given that it's our, our text, for this semester, um, according to Andrea Phillips, she says that there are two types of transmedias that we can generally go by, one being the West Coast transmedia, so it's very Hollywood oriented, um, they talk a lot about, it's very commercial, very fictional, um, the different platforms are very lightly interwoven, you know, you can consume one uh, and it feels complete, you know, you don't have to consume all the different platforms. So the very basic example that she uses is Star Wars, where you've got the books, the films, um, you can go through one and not go through the others. And the second type is the East Coast Transmedia, so more like Pandemic, where it's very interactive, web-centric, um, it overlaps heavily with the traditions of independent film, theatre and art. Uh, they like to use a lot of social media in order to gain publicity, interaction, um, and there's usually a fixed uh, period of time that it's run over. So once that expires, you, know, you can't really go back and explore it anymore. And over these different platforms, they're very tightly interwoven. So you kind of need to go through everything in order to get the bigger picture. So both these types are transmedia, but at the same time, they're very different. And as we go through, you'll find that um, Prison Valley, to us, it feels like it's kind of a merge of the both of them. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so of course we have the most popular forms of um, uh, of transmedia, and according to Goran Berlin in his Media Technologies, Transmedia Storytelling and Commodification, media content providers are developing text across several technology platforms, thus taking advantage of each platform's specific qualities and capabilities. So what these creators are doing are um, maximizing everything as far as possible and making their projects as big as possible. So we've got Prison Valley. You basically, you go to the website and they are going through this city called Colorado where they've got so many prisons there, the most number of prisons um, in the entire country, all these maximum high securities. And their aim is basically to let you explore let you feel. So they're not just feeding you information anymore, they're letting you enter this world and explore it as how you would want to, as if you were there. Um, so it does make use of the online platforms and several different types of media. Uh, the video and the audio are similar to online documentaries, but the specialty that they have are the uh, virtual environments, where users can get em extra information via pictures, uh, videos and um, live interaction, which we will, of course, expand on. So by the time the project had closed, it had an interactive web, it had a book, it had an iPhone app, and there was a very large exhibition. Um, for the purpose of today, we'll only go through the um, web document and the iPhone application, um, and we'll also go over a couple of theories. Um, so the reason why it stood out is because it was very educational, it invoked a lot of thought, as opposed to just watching a documentary. So the main media ingredients, we have of course the virtual environment, they have the visuals, they've got sounds, spoken words, text, online discussions, and photos. So you enter the world, through this website, you'll get an introductory video. So you get a little feel, they do a mini introduction, no sign up required. After that, they do prompt you to sign up, um, you can log in through Facebook or Twitter. This enables you to um, track, well, it gets shown on your timeline. You know, it documents your journey. So 
in this way they're using it as a form of publicity. You know, they're using the users to publicize. Um, it also remembers where you start and stop. So if you close the window, it's okay. You can go back and continue because over the entire documentary, it would at least, from what I felt um, and explored, it would take a couple of hours, maybe five. Um, so it's good that you can break it up and you can take it at your own pace. If you're in it inactive for a certain amount of time, they send you a very gentle email notification saying, hey, let's explore again. So you hit your motel room, that is the home base. They've basically got um, where you exit, a rear window, which doesn't show you much, but you can open it anyway. They've got the clues on the bed, the notebook, um, a section of forums, and also a TV, which doesn't have any channels, but you can go through them anyway. Um, okay. So for the clues and souvenirs, they gradually expand as it goes along. So you start off with maybe four or five, and then it expands from there. They've got articles, statistics, biographies, brochures. So let's say if you clicked on the stats, um, it will come up with maybe four pages worth of information about this. So it does seem like a lot. Um, it, to me, it felt a little bit dry, but gradually, you know, it is, again, up to your own exploration. They've got information on a couple of the characters, but not all of them. So it is, it is quite handy and up to you, again. I think this whole thing is kind of up to you when you're exploring. You've got to have the interest and motivation in order to go through it. Um, this was the most interesting part I found. It's your notebook of contact list. Um, the ones that are in bold, they have already been unlocked. Um, so you've got a fair amount of, of characters that you gradually go through. Um, and when you click on them, it brings you to a real life notebook um, with a biography and it's about two pages long max. So you've got the photos. The most interesting part is the links. So they could have um, a website to their personal blog. Let's say for the journalist, it's her personal blog or a company website where they work, the facility that they work for. Um, there is one character who has, he is a prisoner. Um, he is adamant that he's innocent and he has his own MySpace account and a certain amount of followers and his sister manages this account for him. So you do get to know the characters better beyond them just telling you what they're like. Um, and again, they've got videos as well. So anything and everything that could be used to expand on these characters so that you as a user can get to know the world and explore the world a lot better. Um, the last part, which I don't think was very successful in the entire project, was the forum and discussion. Kind of dialed down a little bit. Uh, you could basically have, uh, you could talk to other people who are on the documentary at the same time. You can ask questions to the people who are part of the documentary. Um, they have, are we already at time? Uh, that's eight minutes, so just say two minutes. <laughs> um, you've got a forum and then you've, during the initial startup they had live special guests uh, who would come in and you could talk to them as well. So extremely interactive. Then you launch out into this exploration, so you go onto the road, um, they've got a series of videos that gradually get unlocked. Um, this is basically what it looks like. They've got uh, something like a Google Maps, so you can go in, zoom in, zoom out, um, and these are all the videos. And as you can see, it's a very extensive list, but what's great is that it doesn't just cover the prisons, it covers people, it covers their emotions, it covers events happens, for example, people have died in the line of duty, and these ceremonies um, that commend them. So it is a very wholesome documentary, I find, it doesn't just cover one alley. Um, great, now we'll move on to the iPhone app. <laughs> I'll just quickly read through this. Um, so the iPhone app, um, users can um, access more video content that follows the documentary, and you can join discussions on topics such as inmate labor and for-profit prisons um, with other users who are also using the app. And you can also access the blog, which contains more content and more on the research side of the project, so the making of. Um, it also links to the Twitter of the Prison Valley documentary, offers slideshows, character profiles, and photos, and users can continue their journeys through the app in um, more portable means. Um, so we're going to look at um, the Prison Valley web documentary in more of an educational transmedia way. Um, it offers an educational journey through the prison systems in Colorado, 
and it offers users an experience following, following their curiosity to discover more about the Clifton Valley and systems such as the Supermax. Um, we looked at Henry Jenkins and his um, idea of transmedia education um, through, uh, sorry, transmedia entertainment through a more educational way of thinking of things. Um, and he describes seven principles of transmedia entertainment. Um, more of these, most of these principles apply to Prison Valley, and these are spreadability versus drillability, immersion versus extraction, world building, surreality, subjectivity, and performance. Um, so spreadability refers to a process of dispersal. Um, this allows students to search out information related to their interests across the broadest possible terrain. Um, so in Prison Valley, uh, users can dig deeper into certain aspects of the documentary by following links, um, which delve, delve into particular stories. Um, immersion, immersion versus extraction. Um, so in Prison Valley, we move through the town in areas such as motels and ceremonies, um, sort of like a virtual world. Um, world building, um, we get to know certain people and their stories living in the town and prison. So it comes out of thinking of uh, space as a story, as a fictional geography. Surreality um, has to do with the meaningful chunking and dispersal of story-related information. So in Prison Valley, we trans uh, there's the transition from the motel into area around the prison and so on, and you can make a cat to continue a journey. Educational transmedia uh, subjectivity um, refers to looking at the same events from multiple points of view. So in Prison Valley, we see events and opinions from different characters perspectives and their feelings on living in a prison town and the view of their town from outside sources. And performance, so that's in terms of the structure of cultural attractors and activators. So turning the information and curriculum into a game. So from information on the page to activities which push that, put that information to, to use. So you can use the information we learn to converse with others via the Facebook, Twitter or forum. Um, and <coughs> educational transmedia allows users to learn at their own pace and follow their curiosity, delving deeper into what interests them. It also allows a varying experience of the educational information. We can garner information through the text, video, audio, and visual images, and this makes it more interesting for people to learn. <coughs> and the idea that inf different students learn better through different modes of communication, and thus the lesson is most effective when conveyed through more than one mode of expression. That's by Henry Jenkins. And lastly, just ending on a quote from um, Laura Fleming. In my opinion, transmedia's crowning achievement will be in its application to education, and in particular to the creation of a wholly new kind of learning. The purposeful information of these techniques, if done well, will provide immersive and truly authentic encounters with learning. What makes transmedia special is that it merges technology with content and genuine human experience. It will become an enduring bridge between the digital world and real life. Through the use of transmedia techniques, participants will enter not just the story, but an entire learning world. And just in conclusion, so it's Prison Valley is a mix of both West and East Coast transmedia, with the web doc being the highlight of the entire project. And it contains educational factors such as invoking throat, uh, thought processes, getting participants to feel connected to those in the document, documentary and post-journey uh, reactions, and it's as close as possible to a real life experience.